This is John Peterson from RDG Woodwinds in a continuing series on oboe adjustments. In this episode, we'll be talking about the low B-flat adjustments. Now, their, Luray just changed their low B-flat adjustment. You can easily tell the difference between the old style and the new style by simply looking at the back of the B-flat, B, and E-flat keys. This is the old style here. You can see this little tab that runs between the B flat and the B. On the new style, there's no such thing there. So first, we'll concern ourselves with the old style since that's much more common. So this is obviously a different oboe than I was showing you before. The reason is that this is the only one I have around right now that has the old style adjustment that I want to show you. The other two both have the new style. The first thing we need to do in the low B to B flat adjustment is to check for the lost motion in the bridge. That mean, this means that there needs to be a little bit of space between this key and this key um, so that the, this is not held open. You might notice that your bell has a, an adjusting screw to do this. Um, if so, that's what this screw is for. Just back it out and that will make more lost motion screw it in and that will make less. Once the screw is set, don't move it. It's not the adjustment screw for the low B flat. That one is this screw right here. Now, to adjust the low B flat, in every other case, we've backed the screw out to start the adjustment. In this case, and in this case only, we'll start the adjustment by screwing it in too far and you'll see why in a minute. What that does is it makes the low B flat pad come down first, but it also creates a little bit of space between the tab of the low B and the touch piece of the B flat. And you can use that as a visual aid to adjustment. Simply back the screw off slowly and you'll see the space between those two get narrower and finally disappear. It's very hard to show on the video, but when you're holding the oboe you'll be able to see. Just hold it up to a light and you'll be able to tell just a tiny bit more. There we go. Now, as with the others, we should verify that adjustment with the feeler gauge. And it feels good. So the adjustment on the newer style is different. The first thing you do is you set the play in the same way as you did on the uh, on the other style. I don't know if you can see it in there, but this oboe does not have any play there, so we have to set some. You simply back this screw out slightly, until there's some lost motion, and that's just not happening yet. There we go. So we, from here on, we leave this in where it's at now. The next step is to get out your feeler gauge. With the feeler gauge uh, touching the B key here, this is what I do. I put my index finger in, and I use this finger to operate the key while resting the bell on the table. While doing that, I test with the feeler gauge all the way around the pad, and I'm looking for a heavy spot. Most of these pads won't be perfectly even. This one happens to be quite even, but the heaviest spot is right here. I'll do the same thing with the B flat feeling all the way around for a heavy spot 
and here the heavy spot is right here. Now that the heavy spots on the pads have been determined, the next step is to loosen the adjustment screw in a counterclockwise direction for the new style adjustment. What this will do is put the adjustment too loose so you can see the B key barely moving while the B flat is held securely down. Now I'm touching the touch piece very lightly with my finger because there's a lot of flex in this whole assembly here and it's easy to get a false reading if you don't if you're not very light with your fingers. So because that's light, I know which direction we need to go. We turned it out, so now we need to turn it in slowly until that uh, until that play in the key disappears. Now I can't feel any motion in that key, so I get out the feeler gauge again and compare the two, heavy spot to heavy spot. And they should be equal, which they are. So finally, the final test for this, whether this is an adjustment or not, is actually a, a playing test. You play it and see if it's working. If it's not, you make adjustments accordingly. It's a good time to talk about play that needs to be in other places. The first one is the low B to B flat bridge that we've adjusted already. The next one is the touch pieces here. You can see that this is moving slightly. If you look here, you have a little bit of motion rocking back before between here and here the effect of that will be to hold this spring down and thus make a leak right here in the E-flat in e pad, uh, making your low notes unpractical from the D on down. You adjust that this play with this screw right here. Um, if there's too much, you can tighten it and get rid of some of it because you don't want a lot. just about that much is perfect. If there's not enough, then you, then you back the screw out and uh, adjust it that way. The next place is the left hand F. You can see how it slightly rocks here before this lever here picks up this lever here. That's necessary because if that's not there, that linkage, then it cracks open your F key slightly, making, again, your low notes not play. If there's no lost motion there, the cure for that is to get some sandpaper and sand this tiny cork underneath this, this key here until there is a little bit of play. Okay, so the next one is the bridges. Let's put the joints together. The first place that there needs to be lost motion is from the F sharp here through this linkage here. So right in here there needs to be lost motion and currently there, let's adjust it right, currently there is just barely some. I would say that's not quite adequate. When we were doing this, these first three adjustments on the top joint we ignored this screw here, and that's what this is for. With most oboes, turning this screw in will increase the lost motion in the bridge. Uh, with some older oboes, they're designed so that turning it out increases the lost motion. You'll have to experiment with your oboe to see which one it is. Um, the next place that ne there must be lost motion is on the other bridge on this side here, you can see how when you operate the trill key lever, just touching it lightly, it moves before picking up the key on the opposite joint, and that is correct. The final place where there needs to be a little bit of lost motion is with this trill key right here. Um, what I'm doing is holding it with my two fingers, my thumb and my forefinger, 
and moving it up and down gently. And it needs to rock slightly before it opens the G sharp. And you can see that it is doing that. If it doesn't, then what you need to do is take off take out these two screws, take off these two keys, be careful because they're hard a little bit difficult to get back on, um, and sand the the cork at the base of this key right here, underneath this foot.